at halfway 40 to 15 meters variable capacitor to, to tune frequency there is another video on the build but if you're ever wanting to copy this idea um, T68-2 core so that's red core T68-2 okay um, we're looking at three primary winding and total of 20 secondary if you look at that there you are. I've done this as an auto transformer won't go too deeply into it but because it's done as an auto transformer it's only a total of 20 turns that's just the method I've chose to use but effectively electronically this will see 20 secondary 3 primary okay <clears throat> When you get it on the bench and you're trying to tune it, directly couple it over here to an analyzer. If it's being built for vertical, which I always have with all of mine, 2K7 resistor will be required to be strapped across the for the tuning on the bench phase, if you like, will be connected between the end of the primary and the end of the secondary. So between the antenna, if you like, and ground you will put a 2k7 resistor in there this resistor will mimic the impression of an antenna you will find that when you put on the analyzer you will find that wherever it's resonant to whatever the resonant frequency is if you cannot get rid of all of your inductance so by inductance I mean X on your analyzer if you can't get rid of it open or close your primary winding a tiny bit with your finger just squeeze it open or close it a tiny bit see which way it goes you can quickly get rid of it when you've got it rid of it and it's working right you will see 50 ohms on its resonant point when on the frequency that the antenna tuner is resonant for now to move that resonant frequency to where you would like to see the antenna say 14.2 megahertz to move it, you will add or remove capacitance between that pin there and that pin there. That's where your capacitor is fitted. You increase it or decrease it, you will see the frequency of resonant point change. Okay? So I won't go too deep past that, but that will get you very much on the way to building a successful build of NFED Halfway. Go to the website of AA5TB, as Alpha Alpha 5, Tango Bravo, Steve Bates, who explains all this in writing. Do follow him, his advice. He is very good at explaining it. It all works, but do not deviate from initially setting on the bench. You must set this on the bench, on any end for halfway. If you try and set it up on the end of a wire, how do you know if this is correct? Or the wire they could both be wrong but one is tuning the other so do as he says follow that moving on from that let's have a look at the the traps we're building the traps for this antenna today and then when we've done it we'll get it up on the air show you the antenna uh, analyzer results and then we'll work some DX with it if the antenna is good and that we'll find out shortly later in the video okay so here we have our core with its windings on it on a uh, loop Capacitors are strapped across the back, making 50 puff. And we've now got to balance it out, basically. The idea is we balance out the inductance as best we can, make it resonant on the frequency that you want the trap to operate. So I've already got quite far with this one, and we're on the uh, final touches. So just to give you a taste of uh, what it comes out like, you're looking for a dip on your meter. Looking for an SWR dip in the meter, so let's see if we can get the camera to read the the screen. Uh, right, so there we go. So there's a dip just about there somewhere. We got eighteen point one two six seven, something like that. Okay, so we've just uh, removed it from the analyzer and hot glued the um, core try our best to stop the parts from uh, the windings from moving so we've now got ourselves a little contained unit self-contained unit now 
which can now slip into the next section. Uh, PVC conduit, so it gives it a nice strong house. The ends have been plugged with grommets, which are intended for 20 millimeter um, electrical boxes. As you know, I'm an electrician, so this sort of components are easy for me to obtain. The nice thing about 20 mil grommets are that they are actually the right size to fit inside of 25 millimeter conduit. Well, they're not designed that way, but it works well. So it looks good. Gives it something to keep it clean and tidy inside. And then moving back onto the, obviously the workings. And hopefully the camera can now grab you a pretty good picture of what's going on in there. Um, the core, I just slide it down inside. It's a, it's almost interference fit. It slides in there and it just drags a little bit which is great because it keeps it in position. Uh, as you can see, I've soldered a, a, the tail off of the core onto a tab, which obviously comes through the other side through the stainless bolt. So that's the, uh, that's the, effectively the trap complete. So we've got on this particular one at the moment, we've got 15 meter trap and we've also built a 17 meter trap. Um, and as you can see the physical size is it's not very big at all that's about well it actually it's not about it is 50 millimeters in length that's 50 millimeters from end to end or if you're old like me um, in English that is two inches so two inches by one inch across the outside that is the physical size of it 15 meters there um, 1.1 SWR 50 ohms. Oh, excuse me for balancing the camera at the same time. Uh, impedance of 51, I think we can live with that. Here we are now on 17, as you can see, 17 meters now tuned in. Uh, very good again. Impedance 48 ohms, 14,250 at the minute, flat SWR of 1. The fall of the uh, inductance. Antenna's up in the air, ready to go. We're ready to go for the grey line. Tuning unit, obviously, we've seen before. A very small tuner. And uh, the traps that we've already made earlier in the video are up, just two of them up there. So we can work, uh, we can work 15, 17, and 20 meters this morning. Seven three. And uh, I give you five by three mark, which is uh, very, very good for me. Uh, from uh, five weeks to halfway vertical there, QSL. QSL there, Tim. Thank you for hearing me and pulling me out the pile up there. And uh, I think you were, I think, uh, I think it was the third or fourth call I put in, you heard, Th third or fourth call. So I was very lucky, my friend. I'll say seven threes to you because obviously you've got a lovely pile up and uh, the band won't hold up much longer. So I'll say seven three. Wish you a good DX and uh, a good Christmas and New Year there. Hope to work you in 2016. As I say, you are the fifth five, one, two, three, four, five. You are the fifth. Vilk Victor Kilo this morning worked from this station, QSL. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Okay, I copy 100%. So, uh, uh, very, very good this evening. Thank you very much for your time. 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 Thank you very much for your
you very much for the uh, calling in. And, um, yeah, it's uh, a pleasure to speak with you because uh, only QRP5 whiskey and a vertical antenna with propagation already not so good on the long path. Very, very good and uh, very unique uh, contact for me. So thank you very much for calling in. I do appreciate it. At 73, and uh, likewise, best of um, the best in season to you and your family as well, Mark, and hope to work you again with your QRP station. A 73 from Bendigo, Victoria, and wish you all the best. Two Echo Zero, Victor Oscar Victor, from Victor Kilo 3, Tango Julia Kilo. Thank you, Mark, 73. Good DX session. Five Victor Kilos in the log, with a few other uh, contacts as well, but uh, the goal today was uh, Zulu Lima and uh, Victor Kilo. Uh, we've certainly done that today, no problem at all. But, uh, I'm going to go home and get a nice warm cup of tea. Long live the QRP. 2E0 VOV QRP Portal. Saying 7-3. Wish you a good Christmas.